Hello there, Drew Hannish Whiskey Lore, and it's time for another whiskey tasting. Today, doing a tasting of Dunville's Irish Single Malt Whiskey. This is a 21-year-old, 53.7% ABV, cask number 2058, Single Malt PX Oloroso. Started its life at Cooley Distillery in an ex-bourbon barrel, but spent the majority of its life in PX and Oloroso Sherry casks. So I did a episode this week about my visit to Eklundville Distillery, which is that distillery right there, and kind of give you a little bit of an idea of where that distillery is. I can pull up my Scotland map and I can say, whoever made this map did not like Ireland because Ireland's right about there and Ecklandville would be very close to that area. And so it's not very far away from Scotland. And so what's interesting about this is that I like to compare the Dunville brand with, to a certain extent, the Glendronic brand in Speyside, Scotland, because they both have a large emphasis on sherry casks. However, the sherry casks at uh, Glendronic are pretty much the only thing that they're aged in, whereas Dunville is spending a little bit of time in an older, in a uh, ex-bourbon cask before it makes it. But, you know, it's spending so many years outside of that cask in the sherry casks that the sherry casks really end up taking over the influence. Now, I'm going to do two tastings of Dunville whiskey this week. The first one is this 21 year old, which is a uh, Oloroso and PX. Later this week, I'm gonna do a tasting of a 20 year old PX, which is actually a lot darker than this whiskey. So uh, we might consider that it's darker because either it was put into a wetter cask, maybe it spent more years inside of those casks, hard to know. But, gonna jump into this one, Mm. And right on the nose, immediately you get a nutty note and a strawberry note that comes out. There's a little bit of a leather note. There's a note I can't really describe in there. It's really... Oh, man. It's like a sweet sawdust. It's like a fruity sawdust is, is kind of what I would describe it as. It reminds me of something. I'll tell you what it reminds me of. I'm getting a visual. That's what I love. Sometimes a smell will bring a visual to your mind. When I, when I was younger, uh, we used to go to uh, somebody's house. I don't know who it was, but they would have like this strawberry, uh, and then it was like cream. Uh, underneath it, and then it was like a jello underneath, and it was like a strawberry jello. It would have strawberries on top, and then it would have this cream on top of it, whipped cream. And that is actually the visual that came to my mind on this. Still plenty of leather notes in there. This is an older whiskey, it's going to pull in some of that. Not so much tobacco notes in this. Cheers. Mm. Wow. A lot of peanut butter and jelly in this. Heavy on the jelly. Um, almost like a Pop-Tart. And then a ginger comes in and some white pepper spice kind of finishes this thing up. What's interesting is that there isn't as much in the way of the Oloroso notes that I might expect out of this whiskey. It is not, I'm not really getting a plum or fig note out of it. Raisins, not really. And so in that way, it's interesting that it, that it doesn't really bring the Oloroso character as much as it is bringing more of that sweet fruit that's coming from the PX cask. So, 
Interesting whiskey. I'm going to throw a little bit of water in here because 53.7%, it could probably do with a couple of drops, although I don't have a whole lot left in my glass. And let's see what that does because the nose is there. <clears throat> it's a little faint, but uh, mm, that brings the baking spices out a whole lot more. Yes, the, the berry is there. Now the baking spices are up with it. And now I'm getting a leather note that's pulling through even stronger. Still not really getting the dark fruits that I would expect, though. Still very berry forward. Mm. Yeah, I kind of just tamed everything down. The berry is still there. The berry really surrounds your mouth there at one point. What it did was it actually took care of that ginger bite at the end. It's not quite as aggressive as it was when I added four. So I think for pleasure of drinking this, a few drops of water actually would probably be a good way to go. So very interesting. Dunville is a brand that that basically disappeared, I think it was in the 30s or 40s, and they just basically said, we're done. We've, we've made our money. We see what's going on with the Irish whiskey industry, and we're out. <laughs> we're not even going to try anymore. And so they just shut down. So it's cool that when Eklundville came around, they said, hey, if we're going to resurrect a brand, why don't we resurrect one that had a great reputation? And they're really trying to create whiskeys that are high-end. Now, as I said, this is sourced whiskey right now. Eklundville... Their origin is, uh, well, the farm was bought around 2007, but it wasn't until 2013 that they started filling casks, but they still have not released their own whiskey. And 2013, hmm, we're, I mean, we're already looking at nine years in a cask for the whiskey that they have distilled themselves, but they still haven't released any. And the reason is they want to get over 10 years and then they want to do like they do with champagne and wines and have vintages. So you could have a whiskey that, just like a wine, could be affected by the seasons. Still going to, you know, barrel movement around the warehouse, all that stuff's going to play in as well. But this brings in another element. If you have five, six, seven harsh years, maybe... You know, that has a different effect on the whiskey than something that didn't go through those five years. And so this kind of gives you a chance to say, hey, this vintage is better than another. And I've seen that happen actually with bourbon, where I've had someone tell me that Weller 12 has good years and it has bad years. And it's just kind of figuring out, is this a good year? Or is this one of the years when it's not going to be quite as good? So it brings another element to whiskey, which I think is fun. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please give me a like and subscribe if you'd like to see more of these videos. Hit the bell if you want to make sure to hear when a new episode is coming out or when I'm doing another tasting. And uh, I'm glad to have you on board. Wish I had some left in my glass, but I don't. Cheers. <laughs> and Salon Duval. Mmm.